So for the Take Me With You record, Beans like, baby, bro, we're going to do something a little different. I said, what, what you talking about? He said, well, we're going to do the Memphis stuff, but I got something. And I, he didn't tell me. So we do the Memphis, we do the Memphis stuff. He said, man, I uh, set up, I, I set up a, a session here in, in Minneapolis with Sonny and Michael Bland and Chance. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went up to uh, Minnesota, man, and, and we cut, we cut about five or six tracks up there with them, man. I'll never forget Mick Edition was coming in the studio checking us out while we were cutting, and. Um, it was just a cool vibe, man. And Sonny and Michael B was awesome, man. And they were they were like so cool to me. Like, Ronnie, we should take this on the road, man. You know, at that time they wanted to go on the road as a three piece. And and being, you know, a four piece with being as a special yeah, guest, yeah. you know. Yeah. I was like, ah. You know, if I had what I have now with the backing of Alligator Records, I would do it. But at the time I didn't have no help. I was just trying to do it all by myself. Yeah. And, 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 you know, when you bring out Michael and Sonny, it's got to be that level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you got a business decision, too, right? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So but that was an honor to work with them. And then we did it again on the Torch album. And the cool thing about being introduced to those cats, man, they all come from the blues. But of course, they do what they do, what they're known for. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they got that blues root in them, man. All of them, you know. And even Terry Lewis and Jimmy, Jimmy Jam, they got that blues root in them. And you you played on one of the tracks with uh, the time that hasn't been released, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, the cowboy or cowgirl, cowgirl. Okay, yeah. yeah. Maybe one day. <laughs> one day, hopefully, man. Uh, Larry Graham's on that track. I believe Prince is on the track. Uh, Terry is on. Uh, I think no, Terry didn't play as Larry. Um, I think Bean's on drums. I'm not sure. I forget. I know I played and Prince. I believe Prince is on rhythm right. guitar too. So I know you've told the story on, on my radio show, but to the YouTube audience and everything, you had a connection hanging out with Prince at Paisley Park um, yeah. a little while back, which is pretty cool. Yeah. What, what was that about? Man, That well, that was uh, actually during that same time being, see what he told me. It's like Bean always looked, you know, hold his cards real close to his chest <laughs> or something because I was young you know I was young and he you know and they they they're famous man you know right. you got you got to protect that you know and um it, he called me up they said man Prince is doing this this celebration at Paisley you should come on up I was like cool so I, I went up there not knowing that he had set up this session with with Terry Lewis at Terry Lewis house Oh, okay. So that's when that's when I did uh, Cowgirl. Right, right. So we we cut the, we cut the two days. I went there first day and uh, hung out at Terry's house and talking. You know, getting to know Terry a little better. And then the second day, uh, I came back and he. Oh, your audio I, dropped out. There I, you go. Yeah, I I, I had I, cut the track um, that day before. And Terry asked me just to come back just to make sure we got it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I came back the next day. He was like, man, I don't know what you did to this track, Ronnie. But I could not let it go all night. I've been working on it all night, man. And he, I was like, come on, Terry. You, don't, you, don't, you know, but Ben was like, no, he's not. He's not playing. <laughs> Terry's serious. <laughs> Terry's very serious. <laughs> and so we ended up that night going to see Prince. And um, at the the celebration, man, it was George Clinton, uh, Erica Badu was was performing that night with Common, the rapper Common. Uh, man, some of everybody, man, was there. And um, Prince said, hey, man, after the show, we was at the sound booth. He, he came to the sound booth, said, hey, man, y'all come to the studio after the, after the set, you know. And he walked away, and I said, Bean. Did he mean me too? <laughs> he said, <laughs> he said, he said y'all. Right, <laughs> so right. I ended up going to the the studio, you know, was inside of the building, but a different part of the building. Mm -hmm. And man, I was quiet as a church mouth, Joe. I was like, man, I'm not saying nothing. I don't want to get kicked out of it. I remember me, we all get there and, and Terry had us uh, do some chanting on this track he was doing for Morris. Morris was there and, um, we were doing this chant, and um, and Terry said, "Hey, why don't y'all go out there and get get some girls? I need some girls to do some chant, 
chanting, you know, on this record. Some oohs and ahs or whatever it was. Right. And, and uh, right when the girls came in, Prince came in. And he started preaching. What are you doing, Terry? What are you doing, Morris? He said, oh, we're just getting some chants, man. Why do you want to do that to the sisters? Now, they wasn't doing anything bad. It was just like, ooh, right. ah, you know what, nothing provocative or nothing, you know, bad at all. But I think Prince used this situation to try to connect and get them to convert to Jehovah Witness. Hmm. And that started a whole conversation that night. We ended up there to like eight in the morning, man. Prince held court. Now, we ended up on the floor of the studio. i never forget this. The Prince is on the piano talking. He's trying to get Terry and Morris, Jelly Bean, and Jerome. Everybody was there to convert to Jehovah Witness. And they were like, man, we're not ready for that. You you there, man, but we're not, you, you know. And, you know, I can understand both sides, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and um. He was playing this beautiful melody on the piano, man, while he was talking. And he'd get up and he'd say something. And, and he just threw out the question. What's the ultimate goal in life? What do you, what do you want to do? What's your ultimate goal? And when he, when, you know, we were talking about music. I wouldn't say a word. But when he started talking about faith, mm -hmm. now we're equal. Right, right. We're equal now in God's eye. In my God's eye, we're equal. And I said, man... I don't know where I got the courage from, Joe, because I just said, hey, man, ultimately, I want to be the best person I could be. I want to be better than I was yesterday. Prince got up out of his chair, man, got on the floor, and I'm sitting next to me and Tori Ruffin sitting next to each other. <laughs> yeah, Tori's Tori, cool. Tori, my brother, man. Tori, I guess I can say this now. I didn't say it before. I can say it now. God rest Prince's soul, but you know, he didn't allow no alcohol or nothing. In yeah, yeah, right. So. <laughs> I think Tori, Tori told the story. Oh, no, go did. ahead. Maybe so, if this is, you tell it. Yeah, okay. So me and Tori sit next to each other. We, you know, we whispering and, and Prince talking over there. We just, yeah, man, man. And I'm trying to listen, man. And all of a sudden, Tori, he had a flask in his jacket and it fell on the floor. Boom! It made the noise. <laughs> And we all looking, and he grabbed it real quick before Pris could see it. <laughs> like if your dad walks in. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And he's like, you think he saw it, man? But Prince kept on talking like as if he didn't see it, man. But me and Tori was crying, laughing, man. <laughs> we were crying, laughing. I said, man, you're going to get us kicked out of here, man. <laughs> so, you know, and then after that, Prince came and sat down next to me, man, when I said what I said. And uh, he's talking. And I I'm like, whoa. Hey, I'm into it with him. We're talking back and forth. And then all of a sudden, Joe, I just looked down at his boots. He had on some bad boots, man. Really nice, sharp boots. Custom look like mm -hmm. with a heel on it. Right. And then it just hit me. This is Prince. <laughs> yeah. This is the modern day Jimi Hendrix. This is Prince. That's right. Yeah. And I went back into, shut up. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Yeah. But genius for you. Great night, man. We we were there all day, man. And then after he, most of the people left, and it was just Terry, Jelly Bean, and Morris, and and um, most of the time, you know, the band and me. He mm -hmm. really got uh, uncandid, and that's the side I saw Prince that uh, uh, I was fortunate to see because he was just when he was around them, it was like brothers. They were like brothers. It wasn't this I'm a star thing or. This thing, he he let that down, that guard down, and and just like one of the fellas, man, he took us around, showing us Paisley, man, and he showed me the the uh, triple diamond of Purple Rain. I had never seen a diamond record, mm -hmm. and he had a triple diamond record, and he was wow. like, yeah, I'm like man, that's cool. And he showed me his his uh, Batman piano, and uh, just showed us around, man. We we just walking around talking, man, and it was just a beautiful day for me, man. I never forget. Yeah, I mean that that's a definitely a relatable story to, that nobody sees. Not the few. Yeah. You're one of the few to, to get. I, I, I was hanging. blessed. Yeah, yeah, that was because of Jelly Bean, man. 